Bayside's headmaster, Michael Tavares, described Jasmine's appointment as well-deserved. He told GBC that she had stood out in the interview process. The head boy and head girl, he said, would do a fantastic job representing both the boys and the girls. For the last a few years now, in fact, going back 10, maybe 12 years, uh, we've had girls coming to our school and I think it's important for these girls not to miss out on the opportunity uh, to be a head girl, for example, just because they happen to be in our school. Um, normally, the girls who come to our school, they're here because of their subject choices and therefore, um, for example, further mathematics. Uh, girls who want to do further maths, they have to come to our school and they become Bayside students. So effectively, they are part of our, our student complement. So why should they miss out on being a head girl, for example, when this is a kind of girl who probably had been head girl in, in Westside had she stayed? In this case, this year, for example, uh, Jasmine is a fantastic student. She has all the attributes, all the uh, qualities to become a head girl, so why not? Why do you bring her up the opportunity? I'm absolutely thrilled. I mean, it's really exciting that this year Bayside has decided to appoint a head girl because it's the start. It's the start of co-education. In the years to come, when co-education finally kicks in, I think it would be quite normal to have a head boy and a head girl. I mean, it, should be, it should become the norm and not the exception. How does it feel for you to share your post with a head girl now? Um, well, I think there, even though there have been um, some deputy heads before and some heads of year who are girls, um, I think it's about time that we do have a female representative in Jasmine um, so high up in um, this school. And to be not only a representative for the girls in this school who come over for DT, geography and further maths, but um, to also kind of represent this school as an institution. As you know, we're moving towards co-education, which I'm all in favour of, by the way. Uh, and that's coming, uh, all going to plan. That should be uh, coming into place as from September 2019, even though it will be a staggered entry. Of, uh, to start with, we'll have years uh, seven and uh, eight as co-ed. But uh, eventually, within five years possibly, uh, the whole school will be co-educational. So it is a, a logical step in the right direction because we will be fully uh, co-educational within the next uh, five years. And therefore, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a logical move. She'll be part of, a, of the senior responsibility team that uh, we have in our school. And she will be uh, co-leading that team with the head boy. And those who will be working closely with her, they, ha they hold her in high esteem. And obviously she will be working alongside uh, uh, Matthew, the, uh, the head boy, and I'm sure between both of them they'll do a fantastic job and they'll represent the school as they should. And they will be there to, to offer support uh, as needed to, to the students. Matthew and I do have a few pet projects in mind. Um, most, most of them are mainly designed to, um, for the transition to co-education, um, soon to come in September. Yeah. I think as well there's a big emphasis um, here in Bayside and in Gibraltar as a whole on uh, charity work and I think that's a major kind of part of our, our jobs to kind of organize and set up charity events and to kind of smash all previous records even though they're really really uh, tough to beat. We're going to try our best to make the most money for charity because that's part of what Bayside has always done and always stood for. Working together, Bayside, Westside and the Gibraltar College have found a way to improve the choices available for students at A-level. In almost every case, Students are free to choose whatever subject they want to, without the restrictions of timetable clashes.